Hold on, we did this intro last time. Let's do a different one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a hollow bug's life. Today's challenge is, can you beat the game without talking to any NPCs? And immediately as we get to the starting town of the game, we meet Elderbug, but we can't talk to him. Traumatized and alone, we make our way down to the false night and we smack him. After that, we make our way over to the snail shaman to collect the vengeful spirit. We have to talk to the snail shaman to get the vengeful spirit. Oh man. Well, the video's over, boys. Thanks for watching. But seriously, though, guys, this this blows up the entire challenge. No. Because there's exactly two ways you can get out of the crossroads. The one is by collecting the Vengeful Spirit, like we just tried. And the other one is to get the Long Nail Charm from Salubra. And well, to get the Long Nail Charm from Salubra, you would need to talk to Salubra. So both of those options are null and void. Just like Horn... <laughs> so now we need to change the challenge's name from Can you beat Hollow Knight without talking to any NPCs to what is the lowest amount of NPCs you can talk to in Hollow Knight and still beat the game? Challenge. I think. So now we need some rules. And the first and most important rule is that if we talk to one NPC several times over the course of the game, then that counts as several conversations with NPCs. For example, when we talk to the snail shaman right here to collect the vengeful spirit, this counts as one conversation. And then after we run through his maze, we have to talk to him again so he lets us out. So that counts as two conversations with the snail shaman, which is uh, quite a lot considering we were trying to go with zero. Then our other option, talking to Salubra, uh, we only have to talk to her once because we only have to buy the long nail charm once. Yeah. And then after we did that, we can head straight to Green Path and spend the next eight hours trying to hit this guy with the long nail because the uh, hitbox on that guy for hitting him with your nail is actually extremely small. I explained that in more detail in this video right here. Go watch it, it's really good. <laughs> But yeah, those are your two options. Either two conversations with the Snail Shaman or one with Salubra. It only makes sense to take the one conversation with Salubra, right? Wrong. Because uh, actually, after we do this, we would go to Hornet usually, right? The problem is, as soon as we get to the Hornet fight, she starts talking to us about, oh no, this is so bad, what you're trying to do, and I have to stop you. And yeah, that, that counts as a conversation. Even though we didn't initiate the conversation, it did happen, so. And then after the Hornet fight, the three dreamers appear and also talk to us for some reason. So that's another two conversations. So why am I saying that that has anything to do with how we came to Green Path? Well, the difference between talking to Salubra and uh, talking to the Snail Shaman is having versus not having the Vengeful Spirit. And if we don't have the Vengeful Spirit, then we need to talk to Hornet to get the dash to cross this gap from Queen Station to the Fungal Wastes. But if we do have the Vengeful Spirit Charm, then we don't even need to fight Hornet at all. But we could just skip her and do this skip, which I am incapable of pulling off, to get to the Fungal Wastes. Now, where does that leave us? Well, if we get the Long Nail from Salubra and then do the Hornet fight, we will have done three conversations. If we get the Vengeful Spirit and talk to the Snail Shaman, then we only have done two 
conversations. So that's what we're doing. But that also leaves us with a big problem. Because now we don't have the dash. And beating the game without the dash is possible, but very, very difficult. Because now we can't just take the casual route to the Mantis Village, but we need to perform this skip, which is an absolute nightmare. It took me two or three hours the last time I did that for another video. And uh, after we've done that, we also have to do a bit of a tricky jump to get over to the Mantis Claw because we don't have the ability to just dash over the gap. And then after we get the Mantis Claw, it gets even worse. Because what we do next is we go to Deep Nest. And as soon as we've made our way into Deep Nest, we want to go get the Tram Pass, which we can do pretty easily. And as soon as we've got that, we want to make our way over to Hera. Of course, we can't fight her yet, but we want to unlock the stag station so we can get back there easier later on. The problem is, you see, as soon as we enter this room, the lights just go... And for the next several rooms, you see nothing. And those are not trivial rooms to traverse. Not at all. There's spike floors, there's the floor falling out under you to reveal even more spike floors. There's enemies, you need to jump up, down and all around. And yeah, I have no intention of doing that, but by the way, if this video hits 10,000 likes, which I know that's a crazy goal, but I, this has to be a crazy goal because I really don't want to do this, um, then I'm gonna do this challenge live at twitch.tv slash taco tv, so if you want to see me suffer, you know what to do. <laughs> but yeah, after these many rooms of darkness, we finally get to the beast's den, or almost get to the beast's den. There is still this little parkour maze, which we need to jump through. And the very first jump of this maze is pretty darn hard. And if you miss it, you fall all the way down and have to go back through the darkness. But the good news is that if we do make the jump, then we can unlock the stag station and just save Quinn out to respawn at this bench. And from this bench, what we want to do is we want to go to the tram station and ride it as far as we can. Next, we want to ascend to the City of Tears. The reason we're taking this big detour to get to the city is because, quite frankly, all the other entrances to the city are blocked. As you can see, the entrance from the Fungal Wastes is blocked because we would need the dash to get in there and the entrance from the ancient basin well I'm pretty sure you can actually make that uh, with like a vengeful spirit blast boost whatever but yeah I couldn't do that so I just went this uh, extra mile you know but that works and now we've made our way into the city of tears which is pretty epic because from there, we can get to the Soul Sanctum, which has the most amazing soundtrack in the game, by the way. And there we can defeat the Soul Master to acquire his Desolate Dive ability, which we actually need very badly in this run, because we need to get into the Crystal Peak. And there's exactly two ways into the Crystal Peak. One is with the Desolate Dive to just break through the ground, and the other one is to go through the dark room in the Forgotten Crossroads. And we can't go through that dark room without the Lumafly Lantern. For which to acquire, we would have to first wake Sly from his Somber, which is one conversation, and then buy the Lantern from Sly, which is another. And we really can't afford those two conversations. And not having the Lantern is also the reason why Deepness was so dark, by the way. Well... Why do we want to go to the Crystal Peak so badly? That is because we want to get the Crystal Dash. And to acquire it, we first need to complete yet another very difficult platforming section. And one of the first jumps is already very difficult. Usually you would just dash over there, but uh, in our case we have to do 
one more of those vengeful spirit blasts, like we did earlier in Queen's Station. And if we manage to pull that one off, there's still more ahead of us. We still got this very difficult, very tight platforming segment ahead of us before we can get the Crystal Dash. But once we've acquired it, we're done with the peaks and we can go to the resting grounds where we will acquire our dream nail. Unfortunately, we have to take another hit because the dreamers talk to us before we enter their dream and during the dream there's another conversation happening. And those two, I've done my research, they are absolutely unavoidable, unfortunately. So that's another two conversation added to the counter. Usually we would have a conversation with the seer right after that dream, but we can just save quit out of the game to skip that conversation and still have the dream nail afterwards. Now we have everything we need to fight the dreamers and get to the final boss of the game. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. And this right here is the reason why we had to get the crystal dash, because uh, the only other way to bypass this obstacle is with Isma's tear. And to get Isma's tear, you also need the crystal dash. Now that we made this jump though, we can get to Monomon's archive without a problem and fight our all favorite boss, Uvu. And after we beat Uvu, we go down to Monomon and beat his Um Excuse me? Yeah, so it turns out we have to talk to Quirrell in order to be able to Dream Nail Monomon and beat him, essentially. So that is one more unavoidable dialogue. After we finished Monomon, we make our way back to our conveniently opened up stack station in Deep Nest. And from there, we get to the beast's den and beat up Hera. There's not really that much to say about it. There's not that many intelligent creatures in Deep Nest. So um, yeah, no one to talk to here. Let's move on to the Watcher Knights. One thing worth noting for the Watcher Knights is that you can't do the regular jump up right here, you have to actually pogo off of this breakable thing and then clip the wall and jump off of it. Usually you would use the double jump or in a speedrun you would pogo off of that thing and then dash towards the wall. This just makes the jump a little bit harder. Just wanted to put that in there. Now for the Watcher Knights battle itself, you know, it's the Watcher Knights. It is a bit harder because you have a level 1 nail, you have no health upgrades and uh, no spell upgrades. So you're gonna have to hit him a bunch of times, but if you can pull that off, you may advance through there and beat up Lyrian. And after you've done that, you can get back to the Black Egg Temple and challenge your brother. The one and only Hollow night the hollow knight as you may imagine is a very tough encounter in this run but as every other enemy so far he is beatable and once you do beat him you only have to press that focus button and the game is over no dialogue and all more that is. Let's look back and see just how many NPCs we've talked to. We talked to the Snail Shaman twice, we talked to the Dreamers twice, and we talked to Quirrell once. That gives us a total of five conversations with NPCs. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my final score. Please do feel free to try and beat me and write me if you've gotten a lower score in the comments. I would love to hear from your successes. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching all the way till the end. This video is like crazy long. It also took like crazy long to edit this thing. Like I started with four hours of just recording gameplay and then I took another 15 or 20 hours just editing all that stuff together. 
And so yeah, I would really appreciate if you could just give the video a like, maybe subscribe. Uh, as I've already said, if this video hits 10,000 likes, then I will of course do this challenge in a live stream at twitch.tv slash taco TV. What else is there to say? I guess I'm just gonna wish you guys a great rest of your day. Taco out.